what's going on? It's Dr. John to a boogie here again. And uh, in this video, I want to show uh, my Italian horror movie DVD and VHS collection. I've actually been a fan of uh, Italian horror movies for a while now. I got into them when I was like uh, later in high school, like probably around 11th, 12th grade. And um, they were just interesting films, very violent, um, very, the stories are very weird. Um, and, um, just, but, um, really well made, too. That's the thing. I think that's why they ended up getting, um, like, uh, put over, like, uh, imported here on VHS, um, in the, like, 80s and everything, because they were just, uh, really good films, even though, uh, some of them may be hard to take in for, um, you know, people who, um, aren't really familiar with stuff like that, but the, with, with how violent films are now, I mean, these aren't, don't even seem that weird anymore, these Italian horror films. The only thing weird about them is that they're dubbed into English. So, um, but a lot of them had a lot of English actors in them, too. So, it's like, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. But, um, I'll start out with probably the most infamous. Cannibal Holocaust. This is the unrated, um, two-disc special edition. I've seen a couple like these uh, with different covers from the same company uh, like Grindhouse releasings I guess it's a Ryko distributor um, but that's pretty cool and um, this is just a uh, classic Italian horror film uh, just really violent brutal part of the cannibal um, subgenre there's a lot of uh, cannibal films that come out in the 70s and 80s it's got a uh, cool insert too a cool poster and everything Show you guys. Pretty sweet, right? Just in, uh, then it has the chapters and uh, a couple cool posters. And um, this movie, um, I don't know, might not be as um, hard to handle as it used to be. It's a little bit dated with time. This came out in the early 80s, and um, you could tell. Um, and it's kind of low budget and cheap, so some of the acting isn't too great and everything, but. Uh, it's a, it was a pretty good movie, and they do that um, real footage thing, which is uh, real popular now. They do a lot of movies that are supposed to look like they're really shot, like this is you're actually seeing real events here. And um, I'm just not too big of a fan of films like that. And um, But this one did a good job, along with uh, Blair Witch and a couple other ones, who actually did a pretty good job making a film uh, that looks real. But this... Um, you know, like I said, it looks a little dated. You can tell that it's not real, real. But um, some of the stuff is still pretty hard to take in. Like some of the real animal deaths. And some of the really violent, um, like, you know, rape scenes and stuff like that. Just might be hard to take in for some people. But again, like I said, with how violent movies are now. Like Saw and everything like that. I'm, I, I can't see how um, too many people can get disturbed by this film anymore. Except the animal deaths, which I do find a little sickening myself too and this is just the classic uh Dario Argento's Suspiria and um if you haven't seen this um you definitely um should for a horror movie fan this movie is just beautiful uh the lighting is beautiful the directing um everything I can list just everything that went into making this movie but everything that went into making this movie was perfect and um, definitely would recommend this to any fan of the genre and um, anyone who's just starting out with Italian horror movies. Um, most of my Argeno and stuff like that are, um, I actually have the out of print Anchor Bay editions. So um, I'll show some of the inserts for the ones I have and stuff like that. Because these are pretty cool and um, kind of hard to find now. I know the Blue Underground editions are a lot easier to find than the Anchor Bay's. This is um, Inferno, which uh, this is Dario Argento's um, film to follow, Suspiria. So um, that's why I checked this one out. Um, kinda, I think this was probably the second Argento film I checked out. And um, it's definitely really sick. The cover is pretty cool there. But um, the back is cool too. And again, this is one of the out of print um, Anchor Bays. And um, just awesome, really, just awesome. This is um, the insert of mine. Actually, um, someone had cut it 
Um, probably hung part of it on their wall, but they kept the chapter selections in. I got this used at a pawn shop, so. Um, but um, I'm glad that they kept the chapter selections in it. But you could tell it was a booklet that had been uh, cut. Um, and someone probably hung the insert on their wall. I mean, the inserts are cool, so I can see why people would uh, do that. And then um, this is uh, Phenomenon, which is uh, one of my favorite Argenos, which I'm probably going to say that about every single one of these Argeno films I show. But he really is uh, one of my favorite horror movie directors. And uh, this is uh, Phenomenon. DVD Anchor Bay again, and this uh, movie stars Donald Pleasance um, and uh, Jennifer Conley, and um, it's just really good, really good film. It's got some weird stuff in it, like most Argento films, but it's really good in my opinion. Some music from Goblin and stuff like that, which is uh, um, in a lot of Argento movies, they play the music and they really um, help, like. Uh, established like the atmosphere of his movies they uh, really helped do that really good phenomenon definitely sweet and worth checking out and then um this is uh dario argeno's um opera and uh this is awesome this is again like i said uh, one of my favorite argenos but this really is probably after suspiria this is probably my favorite, and it's just really, really well done. Um, this movie just, I always get really brought, drawn into it as I'm watching it, and um, it's hard for me to uh, pause it or do stuff like that, but this is the insert. Just a chapter selection on the back, which is um, pretty cool. You just gotta love these uh, Anchor Bay editions. They're just awesome. And, um, yeah, just uh, another Argento I would recommend. And this is uh, from one of the gift sets. They put out a couple, uh, three Argento gift sets. And this is uh, Volume 3. And this one has uh, Tenebri and Deep Red. And I probably said that film's name wrong. Um, Tenebra, Tenebri, I, I just can't remember. I remember someone sh tell showing me, or no, telling me how it's pronounced. But uh, um, I can't remember too good. But um, this is a two-pack from uh, Anchor Bay, which is um, out of print now. And this is a really cool two-pack. Uh, John Saxon is in um, Tenebra, or Tenebri, whatever it is. Like I said, um, I know I'm probably saying it wrong, and sorry for whoever knows how to say it right. And then um, Deep Red, which is one of Argento's earlier films that I have. The Deep Red is the only film I have by him that came out before uh, Suspiria. And, uh, yeah, this is just, I would recommend this two packages buying these films separate. <clears throat> but they come with, um, inserts. And this is the other one for, uh, Tenebra. Again, uh, probably saying that movie's name wrong. And, um, Deep Red. And, uh, these are just, uh, cool inserts. This one's more like a booklet. Which, uh, Anchor Bay just never, uh, disappoints. Just always, uh... Does a good job on their uh, DVD releases. All right, now for some Lumberto Baba, and um, he's the son of uh, Mario Baba, who is one of the most uh, legendary Italian directors. But I actually don't have any of his films on uh, DVD right now or VHS, but I used to. I used to have Black Christmas and a couple others. Not Black Black uh, Sabbath, <laughs> Black Christmas, but I used to have Black uh, Sabbath and a couple other things. But this is the Demons two pack. Which um, is part of the Argeno collection, just because Argeno produced these and his name's uh, like slapped first on the credits. You can tell uh, um, even back then his name helped uh, sell movies. His, uh, he's just awesome, Argeno. One of my favorite uh, horror movie directors again. And uh, just uh, good stuff. Um, Demons 1. It's great. It's about this, like, you get invited to this, um, like, mysterious movie theater, and then everybody gets locked in, and slowly, uh, like, people start turning into demons, and there's, like, no way out. It's just great. And then Demons 2 is similar, but it takes place in, like, a, uh, hotel or, um, some type of housing community thing. And, um, Demons 2 is awesome. Uh, in the party scene, they actually have the song, uh, Panic from the Smiths. Which, um, you may know I used that song in my, uh, 
for the theme for my um, update videos. And um, just uh, Demon's movies are awesome. Just some of my favorite uh, horror movies in general. There's another two pack from uh, Humberto Baba. And this is a Blade in the Dark and Macabre. And um, Blade in the Dark, I would definitely recommend. Uh, Macabre is a little bit, um, a little weirder. But then again, like I said, all these Italian horror movies, their films are a little weird. So, um, you know, they, um, they're all a little weird. But they're good. And um, I know you can get this on a Blue Underground 3-pack that comes with Shock, which is a Lumberto Bava and Mario Bava like team direct directed movie and that is just I've been wanting to see that for a while so I'd love to actually trade that three pack in for this uh Anchor Bay um drive in two pack which is still pretty cool because these are out of print too like I said most of this Anchor Bay stuff is um out of print from what I know and um most of it uh is kind of hard to find so um and then um here we have a um we have the Italian cut of Dawn of the Dead and um, this is actually um, Dario Argeno um, was friends with George Romero, from what I know. And um, he um, like recut the movie um, for an it for the Italian audience. He like added um, different music in. He added um, some more. He like cut some of the funny scenes out, and I think extended some of the violent scenes, if I remember. And, um, but really, other than the director's cut, like, Dario Argento's director's cut, there's not too much different. I would say it's kind of like an extended version of the theatrical cut, but just a little bit different. And, um, this is the cover for it. Which is sweet. And, uh, in the back. And, um, I have the insert for this, too, which is sweet. And, um, this is just awesome. Like, um, this has a full soundtrack by Goblin, and, um, it just is cool. Next up, we have, uh, Zombie 2, which is actually the sequel to, uh, this movie. The Italian cut of, uh, Dawn of the Dead, which is called Zombie Internationally. <clears throat> so, um, this is just, uh, pretty cool. One of my favorite zombie movies. And um, it's uh, pretty cool. Not a good sequel to Dawn of the Dead. Not even close to Day of the Dead. But um, still, a, still a pretty cool movie. And you gotta love the cover. The cover is almost as infamous as the whole movie itself. Which is that way with a lot of these um, uh, like movies. But um, yeah, this has a nice little um, insert. Which is sweet. With the famous... Um, famous scenes in this movie, um, one of the famous scenes is the eye uh, gouging scene, in the zombie fighting a shark scene. And then another film directed by uh, Lucio Falusi, which I might be saying his name wrong too, again, um, a lot of these uh, foreign directors and foreign movie titles I'm not the best with, I never took classes on how to pronounce foreign names, so I'm not the best at that. But um, this is The Beyond, and uh, The Beyond is awesome. This is a crazy, crazy film. Probably one of uh, Lucio Falusi's uh, more popular titles. This and Zombie are probably his more well-known. And um, I would definitely um, recommend this to any gore fan or just any um, buddy looking to get into Italian horror movies again. This is just a uh, really cool movie. The Beyond. The House by the Cemetery, which this is another Lucio Flusi film. And uh, this is pretty good. Um, the only thing bad about this movie is um, the... The actor who overdubs the little boy in this movie. I've said this before in some of my other videos. It's just uh, bad. It's annoying. Um, the kid is extremely annoying throughout the whole film. Not the kid himself, but the actor who like overdubbed him. And the same little kid in this movie is in Demons 2. And I think his sister is in Demons 2 too. Because they look very similar, the two actors. 
like kind of weird. Um, but uh, this is kind of like a Frankenstein-ish story. And um, like I said, it's really good. The only flaw about this movie is um, the little kid uh, overdub. It seems like they just didn't... It seems like it was almost like an old guy pretending to do a kid voice. It's horrible. And um, But uh, other than that, this would probably actually be my favorite Lucio Felucci film if it wasn't just for that. But other than that, it's still really worth checking out because it is one of my uh, favorites. This is the Anchor Bay Dish. I don't have the insert, but it has um, all this information on the flip side in a clear case. Which is kind of, uh, kind of cool. I've seen Anchor Bay do that before. My Beyond is kind of like that too. And this is the insert for the Beyond, which I have, which is just awesome. Like, really wish I had a poster of that. It's the back with the chapter selection. And these Italian films are just really crazy. Um, really well done, like I said before. Definitely worth checking out if you haven't um, seen a lot of Italian films yet. Manhattan Baby and uh, The New York Ripper. These are my last two Italian horror films, and these are um, part of the... Lucio Felucci collection. This is volume two. I think there's a couple, two, three volumes to this collection too. And um, these movies are a little weird. I remember the New York Ripper was really weird. Um, the killer had like a Donald Duck voice. Um, there was some very odd um, fetishes in this film, like sexual fetishes. And um, some of the scenes just came off as like kind of awkward sitting down watching this. It seems like it was almost like a personal fetish film. In New York Ripper so uh, definitely worth checking out if you like obscure slasher films or if you're just a really big Italian horror movie fan but um Manhattan Baby I actually remember being a little bit better I can't actually remember this movie too good but I remember I enjoyed it as I watched it so um, I actually need to get around to rewatching Manhattan Baby but I would um, recommend it just from remember uh, I remember I liked it at one point and then um, this is uh, the last thing I had to show, which is um, Frozen Terror on VHS, which is actually a um, a retitle for uh, Macabre, a, that Lumberto Baba film that I was talking about before in this video. And um, this is just an awesome VHS. Just looks um, very cool, in my opinion. This is uh, my favorite VHS cover. In my collection so far um, just I love it I mean just the head in the fridge that's kind of what the movie's about so it's kind of cool that they went with that um, while promoting the movie because um, um, I actually like this title and this cover uh, more than uh, macabre but macabre is a little more uh, you know like um, not just throwing it out there like this is just like kind of cheesy in a sense so i can see why lumberto baba wouldn't do something like this but um i think it's awesome and um this is the only italian horror film i have on vhs but uh again i thought it was definitely worth uh, showing but um yeah that was my italian horror film collection so um i hope you enjoyed and um i'll have some more videos coming up soon so uh thanks for watching <laughs> Sha-la-la-la, sha la 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 la